Uh, good afternoon. Welcome to Deer Corner. Um, up here today, I'm at the northwestern end of the property um, down here at the creek and uh, doing a little pre scouting. And there's a lot of advantages and disadvantages of pre scouting. So I'm going to go through some of the advantages, and there's a whole lot of disadvantages. Um, so I'm glad you're coming along with me. The neighbor's got the cattle back up in here. Um, I'm letting him go ahead and graze some of this bottom land out and uh, thin it down so I can get some planting going in. I'm planning to come back and throw a little pasture mix in where his cattle have eaten down uh, some of the undergrowth for the deer season this fall. So let me go ahead and uh, just show you around a little bit and discuss a little preseason scouting the advantages and disadvantages so i'm glad you're coming along just tag on in and we'll just go from here we're down here i like calling it the sandbar sandbar area this is just one large point on this little creek ditch it comes around and then comes back off this hillside this mountain down through here and it comes down there's and then it turns into some flat land back in here now this is one area I pre scout kind of see what the deer are doing and where they're moving and right here is an area that uh, deer aren't traveling on and this is part of the cons of pre scouting now during deer season, this trail here will be tracked up. But during the, the spring and the summer months, you hardly find a track coming down off of this. And the reason being, there's plenty of foliage here right now in the mountains for deer to eat that they're not using this trail. And as further up the mountain you go, during the cold, when it starts freezing, the top of your foliage your trees will start turning brown and dying down and as winter come it slowly moves down and into the bottom here and a lot of this here will stay green up to the first of December so your deer will come down in here in this bottom and creek bottom and feed and then you will start finding your deer tracks coming through these trails here. Right here, where these old trails come in. And you can walk up through here and you won't find a deer track at all. But come deer season, this will be all tracked up. So, here's a couple here. Right here, where deer walk through. Deer been in here. There's a few tracks, but nothing like there will be during deer season here in the bottom. And this is a hard, hard area to hunt. And the reason that is, is to get to it without disrupting anything. But this is one of the advantage and the big disadvantage of early scouting because the deer will make a different move during deer season. The deer will actually change their lifestyle come fall early scouting i could sit and see how many does i have where they're at do i have does in the area that are staying in the area and then i could actually go ahead and coordinate my hunting to what i see in the early season but this is part of the example of why it's early scouting's a con because deer will move according to the seasons and this is a very good area to hunt but it's a hard area to get to so this is one advantage and one disadvantage of early scouting okay another good advantage of early scouting down here is this right here finding these old rubs on these trees right here nothing's been up and down this trail 
deer trail, but these trees here, you can find rubs right here. You can find these old rubs where the deer are actually rubbing on them. And that is an advantage. You can find where the deer are moving during the rut in what area. I could walk this whole tip down here and look at where they have been rubbing the limbs off of these trees. And this point right here in the bottom, there's seven deer rubs in this little bitty 30 by 30 area. And it holds some pretty good bucks through deer season. So finding these, it is an advantage of early scouting. Now these wild rose bushes, that's what I call them. They have a name, but they, uh, this is the third year since I planted them down in here. I've had trouble with erosion. And uh, one of the reasons I planted these is like I said, during late November, first of December, these will be the last to lose their leaves. And the deer love them. Deer come down in here and nip on them. And uh, you can sit here and see where the deer have actually been coming in and nipping at the tips off of them down through here. All the way through here, you can see where they've been nipping a new growth off of these roses. And this is a plant you can put down if you have to take care of it in an area that, because it is a evasive plant, it will take off and grow in. But deer do like it. And in mid hunting season, it, this here will hold its leaves and hold some growth for deer to go ahead and feed on. So your last week in November into December, they'll have some growth down here in the bottom. And uh, sitting here looking across and up that valley, up through here you're looking at the same thing. Now that's getting thicker. Now that, that's going to hold some deer. It's going to hold a lot of deer up this valley. And pre-season scouting, I'm looking at my growth. Can I plant something else to help maintain and hold deer? Or just leave it go and I'm fine? to hold three or four deer in here. And that's also a con, because you don't know how many deer you're gonna be able to hold. Look up that valley there, how thick that is. Yeah, that, that's gonna bring in some deer, it's gonna give them cover. And that's a pro. So your pre-season scouting does pay off in the long run. One of the very things up I the do look side for, there. like I say, this is uh, July, is I'm wanting to hold deer. I'm not wanting to feed them because once this bottom and this wooded area here in the mountains lose its growth, the deer are going to start moving out to the peach orchards and areas like that on the edge of the timber. But if I can hold them in here as long as I can during deer season, that's a pro. Now, if I get a real, real hard freeze and frost, and I start losing my growth that I've been working for in here for years, to bring and maintain and help hold some deer in here for hunting season, the weather, it, that's another con on working this bottom land in these bottom creek areas. So there are pros and there are cons, but you have to look at what you're doing and how many deer. Um, I could have three or four deer in here 
and graze all day long and won't hurt nothing. But if I have six, seven, eight deer in here, they'll clean it out and then come hunting season, I'll, I'll be looking for another area to hunt. So you have to do pre-season hunting to see how your growth is going. Now I did throw some lime out here and some fertilizer on this here earlier this spring. And I'm just looking at the greenery. You can tell by looking through here the different shades. The different shades of green to where I did get the fertilizer and I did get my lime through the years. And you can see the different shades of green and that will tell you which ones are which. But it takes a lot of work and a lot of time. But it's worth it in the long run. Another good advantage of early preseason scouting, especially if you're hunting public land, is looking and finding areas like this. This is what you're looking for, at least up here in the mountains on public land. Now this is private, but this is a good example of pre-scouting for public land finding areas such that you can hunt ahead of time. You know the foliage, you know how it's growing. You can actually pick out a tree to hunt out of, to put your stand in, and you can actually sit there and map out your way in. You can sit back and figure out your way in, your way out, where the deer are moving, the old deer trails, your foliage, what will be here to eat, what won't be here to eat. So it's an advantage now for pre-season scouting on even public lands or right now. I know it's hot and humid, but it's getting out and doing it before hunting season to where you're going to be on a panic. Where am I going to hunt? Where am I going to go? How do I set up? So a good pro on pre-season scouting is such an area in this little valley here. And I have a stand up further, but yes, this area here holds a lot of deer. Now, I don't mean hold it. They do bed in here on this hillside. This hillside over here, they bed down in. Now, over that hill, that little mountain ridge over the hill, that's north. This is basically a southwest, southeast area right here southeast southeast up that way southwest going that way there's a landing up through here and I have seen deer lay down up in that landing right there in front of us so preseason that's a pro on figuring out where who what where and how basically the con side you may not know if you're the only one that found this area on public land. There may be several people that hunt this area that you don't know. And that's the con. So when you're walking this area, you walk the creeks, you walk the edges, you look for footprints of anything, anybody been walking through it, and also pre-scouting. You look for marks, you look for ribbons on a tree, you look for thumbtacks, you look for anything that will give away an area that someone's already chosen for a tree stand. And usually they'll put a thumbtack up and they're marking their area. So you can follow the thumbtacks out and in. So that is the con of finding an area such as this to hunt during hunting season. And that's the con for public lands. It's just not for you, it's for everybody. And you may not be the only one that knows. So that's a factor you have to figure in. The deeper you get in, the better off you are. All right, you scouted the area. So then you found where deer bend, you found your rubs. You may have found a scrape or two. You may have found where deer are bedding. You found that deer are nipping on these here, eating here, eating there. So during hunting season, 
then your next step comes in, your weather. How is the weather going to affect your hunt? Where the snow coming in, the wind direction. And then the other thing you're going to have to figure out is how to get your deer out of there. Once you, if you put one down, that's 80% of hunting is how to retrieve your animal that you're taking down. So you'll have to figure all that out before you come in here to push your stand. Let's say you found a place. You're going to place your stand. You're going to mark it. You look the area over and there is no signs of anybody else in that area. Now this is hunting public ground. Then you're going to have to figure out how to get that deer out because a lot of public grounds do not allow four-wheelers in it. You have to get it out by hand. So is it going to be a lot of work? Is it going to be worth it? Your age, your health of getting a deer out of an area such as this. And you'll have to plan all that. This may be an area you scouted, you found, and you can let your stepson hunt it or your son hunt it, but you found a decent area to hunt. And getting out and scouting, preseason scouting, like I say, has its pros and cons. Walking up this hillside, this is the largest scrape on my property I have ever found. It's right here this old cedar. That cedar got to be every bit of five inches round. But yes, they've been scraping on it. That doesn't tell the size of the deer. It just says at this top of this ridge it's being used. Top of this ridge here looking down on the creek. So Another good sign that this little area down in here is holding deer. And I'm not saying holding deer, it has deer passing through. I've uh, walked this bottom out maybe 15, 17 acres. Found a whole lot of deer sign as far as the previous season. I haven't had but two or three tracks down through here through this summer, which is expected. But during the fall, they'll be moving in, in here for cover, and what's left over for feed, so they can feed. So there's a lot of pros and cons on pre-season scouting, especially public land. And what I just want to bring you along, I'm glad you came with me. And I hope just to show you a little tricks and tips on what to look for when you pre-season scout, but you got to keep your eyes open and notice just about every little thing in detail. So when you come in in hunting season, you already got a picture in your mind of what it looks like. It's nice to put trail cameras up, but if you see the signs that we have seen today down through here, you don't need trail camera signs. You know they're here. You know they're here during deer season. They left the signs from last year and the year before, the scrapes, the paths, everything else is here that they use. So basically a trail camera is just something you have to be able to return to, get photos, go back and forth. And right now the deer aren't traveling through here so a trail camera wouldn't do you very much good because you won't get no pictures of deer. But come deer season, they will move down into these areas, into these valleys, and start feeding because that's what they have to eat. Once it's gone, like I said, they'll move to the edges of the timber. And here there's roughly 6,000 acres. I don't own it all, but I own a piece of it, and they'll be traveling through me to get to the apple orchards and things like that they feed. So I'm just looking at areas that are coming through to get to that point. Uh, thanks for coming with me. Go ahead on the right hand bottom, hit that arrow, subscribe, leave me a comment, I'll get back to you. And thanks for watching, and be safe when you're out there. Let someone know where you're going. Up here, if you get lost, you may never get found. People up here have been lost for weeks on end. So, yeah, just let people know and be safe. And this is God's country too.